continuing story of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie, Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi, Mia Farrow as Allison McKenzie, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson, Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson, Christopher Conley as Norman Harrington. This morning, Stephen Cord fears that the blistering clarion editorial against John Fowler would be an obstacle in the way of a new trial for Rodney. And Elliot Carson knows that for him, today will be a trial by fire. Well, it was clearly marked editorial, Mrs. Patterson. But your opinions are really all over the place, aren't they? No, I don't think you'll find anything subjective in the news stories. You've been very unfair to Mr. Fowler. Well, you're entitled to your opinion. I hope you'll allow me mine. I've been an advertiser in the Clarion for six years. If you want to withdraw your advertisement, I'll make a refund. Well, I do. All right. Mrs. Patterson, I understand. Goodbye. Hello, Stephen. Elliot. Well, you look like you've had a bad cup of coffee. It wasn't the coffee. It was what went with it. Your editorial on John Fowler. And what about it? Why'd you write it? <laughs> because it had to be written. That's a matter of opinion. That's right. And as long as I'm editing the clarion, opinion is what you'll get in my editorials. Oh, I know the people in this town expect this paper to center on debates about whether or not the bandstand needs an extra coat of paint for the 4th of July, but I happen to think there are a few other subjects they should be reading about, too. So you're taking it upon yourself to jar this sleepy little New England village into the 20th century? No, but I am taking it upon myself to make the clarion live up to its name. The horn that sounds the call to arms. May I ask why you chose today to sound off? Why couldn't you wait 24 hours? Rodney's motion for a new trial goes before the judge this morning. I was hoping Fowler would admit he doesn't have a case. Now, you made it impossible for him to bow out gracefully. Well, let him get out ungracefully. He may not bow out at all. Oh, Stephen, listen, I knew the loose ends of Rodney's acquittal weren't tied off when I wrote the editorial. But if I thought they were going to affect his chances in any way, well, I'd have run a blank front page before I'd have printed it. Well, I wish you'd run off that blank front page. Hello, dear. Steve Harrison. I just saw John Fowler going into the courthouse. He gave me an awful funny look. That all? That's all. Just turned on his heel and went on in. <laughs> and make you feel any better? Look, Stephen, if Fowler were going to do any swinging, he'd come over here and throw the first punch at me. But Fowler's always taken the path of least resistance, and it's not going to be any different now. You know, when I was trying to find out why Stella lied, I came up with a pretty pet theory, and you gave me some advice. You said life was untidy that everybody had an element of the irrational, that no one else knows sure why a person does certain things. And now you're standing here telling me Fowler is as predictable as the sunrise. Now, your own inconsistency had to point out something to you. I'm not saying that I know everything Fowler will do. I know one thing he can't afford to do, and that is call any more attention to himself and to the way he's been running his office. You still took an unnecessary chance with your own reputation and Rodney's future. If that's going to be the new look of the clarion, You'd better take a good, clear look at it yourself. Mrs. Carson? He's just jumpy, huh? Maybe you're the one that's jumpy. Paper that goes after a man the way you went after Fowler usually has a great big neon sign out in front. That's not a bad idea. New sign, the one that's been up there has probably been there since the turn of the century. Maybe I'm getting old, but I kind of like things the way they are. Well, tradition is a good thing, Dad, as long as you don't drown in it. If you want a new kind of paper, go ahead. It's up to you. Matt left the clarion in your charge. I guess he knew what he was doing. <laughs>
Steve. Uh, I thought it'd be better if we went in together. I know Judge Jessup. He likes everything to be very formal. Oh, well, thanks for waiting. Uh, I'm uh, sorry about the editorial, John. I just told Elliot what I thought of it. Should we go in? Oh, wait a minute. Well, what is it, Stephen? I said I'm sorry about the editorial. Yes, I heard you. Turning the other cheek? <laughs> Something like that. You're a remarkable human being. Really. Oh, thanks. Let's go in. Why not hit back? And a newspaper man? Well, he's got all the advantage, hasn't he? Right now, yes. Well, what do you want me to do, Stephen? Make a public admission that this editorial hurt me? Okay, it hurt me. Look, my father was the district attorney of Peyton County for a good many years. He had quite a few struggles with the press. He always told me that today's newspaper ends up on the bottom of tomorrow's trash can. No, Elliot's editorial won't be forgotten. Well, I'll just have to take that chance. I disappoint you, don't I? Yes. Now, I would have pleased my wife if I'd been more sympathetic to her, more understanding. I'd have pleased the editor of the Clarion if I'd been able to predict that Stella Chernak would lie on the witness stand. And apparently, I'd please the people of Peyton Place if I kicked and screamed every time somebody threw a rock at me. Well, all I can say is I'm John Fowler, my father's son, and nobody else. Sorry about that. Are you going to move for a dismissal on this? Let's go in. Settle for a glass of milk. I've just been reading my father's editorial. Yeah, that's what I see. Allison, now that you and your father are getting along again, I hope you won't let this piece he wrote upset you. Why should it upset me? Well, it upset me, and I've known him a lot longer than you have. I just want you to know that he's got another side. I enjoyed reading it. I thought it was good. Actually, you know, he said more about himself than he did about Mr. Fowler. Well, that's what I mean. He showed himself to be willful and lacking in discipline. He just got up a boiler full of steam and blew off. That's not what I saw. I saw a man who has intense feelings about justice and morality and has the courage to speak up about them. Well, I'm glad that's the way you saw it. But that's not the way most of the people in this town are going to see it. Then maybe they don't deserve to have an editor like my father. Mm. Hey, this is good. It's all right. Thank you. You're all right, too, Allison. Thank you. Why don't you tell your father how you feel about what he wrote? Mm. Do him a lot of good, especially coming from you. I couldn't. That's too bad, because you know what he's going to hear? People in a small town are used to things happening gradually. Two things they won't take a sudden change, the Sunday sermon and the daily paper. Especially when they're being told they might have made a mistake, huh? That's part of it. They elected John Fowler to office. They don't want to be told they're wrong. Well, I don't think the man who wrote that editorial is particularly concerned with popularity. Ah, there's the rub. How is he going to influence his readers if he offends them? And the quickest way to offend them is with a personal attack on John Fowler. What do you think our country would be like if we didn't have a tradition of criticizing our public officials when it's justified? Mm -hmm. When it's justified. Pinch me. Ah. I never ignore a client's request. Even silly ones. Hey, who's a client? You know, I'm a free man, buddy boy. I need a lawyer like I need three heads. Well, I didn't expect a testimonial dinner. However, hey, do I have to tell you? Anything I've got, ask. Right, Dad? What'd you say, son? Would you settle for a testimonial lunch? I 
would if I didn't already have a luncheon appointment with Ted Bell. We'll do it some other time. Stay out of trouble, okay? You better believe it. Well, son, how does it feel? Oh, I can go where I want. I can do what I like. I can figure out what that is. Hey, Rock! Go ahead. Give your brother-in-law a kiss. Hold it. That's enough. What are you doing just standing around? That's a good question. Well, we're kissing here. That's a good question. You can't hang up too long. They'll slap a big charge on you. Oh, out ten minutes, and I've already got my troubles. We got a suggestion. Speak. Well, we were wondering if you'd like to come and stay with us. Well, that's very nice of you, Rita. If you can stand my cooking, we'd love to have you for as long as you like. It's a very generous offer, Rita, but I'm afraid a little impractical. Why is it impractical? For one thing, it'd be much too crowded. Oh, well, we don't mind if Rod doesn't. There you go. I'm afraid Rod will have to veto it. Well, we can argue it over lunch. I'm afraid we'll have to veto that, too. Your brother and I have a great deal to talk about. Well, listen, I'll, I'll see you later on, huh? Maybe, maybe up at the apartment. Stay cool. Well, how about lunch tomorrow? Sure. The security counselor isn't in session, I think. No, I'm... Well, he's up to something. How do you know? I know. Your brother and I have a great deal to talk about. I'd like to know what the big deal is. Mm -hmm.